What's up, y'all? Y'all good? Yeah. There's more y'all in here than that. Are y'all good? Yeah. This isn't a black thing, is it? This is because I see two black women right there. Y'all should be clapping the loudest. What's wrong? <laughs> and that was a white lady. I got a question. Is racism still relevant in America? Look, nobody, am I speaking German in here? Is, is racism still relevant in America? Yeah. Yes. See some of the white people are like, whatever do you mean? <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. Racism will always be relevant in America for two reasons. One, it's just too much bad history in this country. And two, I just think it's natural for everybody to be a little bit racist. And white people, y'all are the first ones to denounce that. I'm not racist. I'm incapable of being racist. My best friend is black. He's also my chauffeur, but he's my best friend. <laughs> Let me tell you something, everybody in this room, everybody in this country is a little racist. You might not be smack a taco out of Mexican hand racist, but everybody is a little, forget y'all man, that's funnier than that. I don't know why y'all scared to laugh, y'all act like 300 Mexicans are gonna pop out the kitchen. What the <laughs> It's hilarious. You don't know how racist America is until after you leave. Like I did a show not too long ago in Edmonton, Canada. There is no racist vibe in Edmonton. Well, first of all, ain't no brothers out there, so ain't nobody be mad at me. <laughs> but the comedy club was inside this mall. It was like the world's biggest mall. I must have walked around that mall for four days looking for a black person. <laughs> Finally, I saw one. I didn't even know him. I just ran up to him and hugged him like, dog, where you been? We need to stick together. He was offended. He was like, dude, get your hands off me, bro. That's totally uncool. I was like, they got him. They got him. It's too late. I know I'm not supposed to cuss on this show, but if y'all don't pep up, I'm gonna start cussing everybody out. It's really weird, man. Yeah, like, I, didn't, I didn't really do much today. Um, sat around the house, smoked weed. Any weed smokers in here? Mm -mm, y'all cops. That was a test. Real weed smokers don't yell out. We got codes. Shh. I like smoking weed, man. You know what's cool about smoking weed? It make you think about stuff you normally wouldn't think about. You know, like I was sitting around the house today smoking weed and I got to thinking, is it possible for a male midget you gotta be high to be thinking about midgets. <laughs> Said, is it possible for a male midget to have a real big penis? Cause I ain't like gay or nothing. It's just, you know, everything on a midget be tiny. You ever see their fingers? They look like them little orange baby carrots. You ever see? <laughs> like could a midget actually have something like this? And I actually know famous midget people. Like I'm good friends with Lil Webster and Gary Coleman. I got their numbers on my cell phone. I don't know why, but I got it. <laughs> And I was hanging out with Little Webster one time and he told me something that blew my mind. He says when he has sex, he don't like having sex with women his size. He liked to have sex with grown size women. And I was sitting around the house smoking weed and I got to thinking, if Little Webster was having sex with a grown size woman, doggy style, is he actually standing up in the bed? Fellas, you know, you get a woman on all fours, your feet flat to the floor. Is he standing straight up in the mattress? Like if you walked in on something like that, your instinct would be to leave. But you'll check that out for a hot minute. When you walk in like, oh my God, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Dog, look at this. This is crazy. No, he's standing on a Nike shoe box. I can't believe this. Some weed that is deep. It's funny, I just got back from off the road. Comics, we don't really do much when we're on the road, except stay in the hotel room and watch TV. And I'm flipping through some of the stations and I'm watching these programs like Povich and Springer. And I'm noticing white people, some of y'all's kids is out of control. I always wanna ask y'all, why don't y'all beat y'all kids? Y'all give y'all kids all kind of timeouts and special places. What the hell is a special place? To a black child, that's a coma, what is that? Black kids don't know nothing about time out. We know about getting knocked out, that's it. My mother used to slap the out of me in public and I would look at people for help. 
like, shut up. <sighs> White people felt my pain. Oh my God. Black people see black kids get hit. They like, hey, hey, get your together. Black people will beat other people's kids if they mess it up too bad. Like, miss, you need to whoop this ugly man. Put that down. Here's my website, email, home address. Call me. I'll kick his ass anytime you need. You ain't got to kill him. Just watch him turn red. Just watch him. Turn red. Just beat him. You know what I found out growing up? It shocked me. White kids are just as shocked to find out black kids don't talk back to their parents as we are when we hear them talk back to theirs. Because I used to have a little buddy would come over my house on the weekends, little Nate. We'd be in my room playing video games. My mother used to come in the room on us and cuss me out for no reason. Just scare the hell out of both of us. We'd be in the room playing Mario Brothers. She'd come kick open the door like SWAT. We on level four. She just, Aries, how many times that I told you to clean this room? Cut that damn game off and clean this room. I come back, this room ain't clean. I'm gonna take that Nintendo cord, wrap it around your neck and stick it in your ass. Boy, I ain't playing with you. This ain't no threat. This a problem. Try me, boy. Try me. My white friend would turn to me offended like, dude, what the hell? She can't do that, man. This is your space. This is your area. She's violating your right to privacy. You should say something. You want me to go say something? I'd be so scared, I'd start talking to him like a slave from Roots, like, you was gonna get me's in troubles. I like you, Nate, I really do. But my parents is good black folk. They gives me food, they gives me sleeps. Now you get away from around here with that foolishness. Get from here. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, Lord. Look, some of the black people chiming in. Let my people go. My mother smacked the white boy. He turned into me. Wait in the water. That's foreign to a lot of the white people. You're like, really? Speaking of physical abuse, before I go, I got to talk about an interesting experience I had with one of my favorite athletes, Mike Tyson. I know a lot of people don't like Mike, but I like Mike. I'm with Mike to the end, which is now, but I'm with him. <laughs> I actually met Mike, man. It was really crazy, because I'm such a big fan of his. I did this show called The Best Damn Sports Show, and I'm sitting on a panel, and it's me, Tyson, Tom Arnold, and John Sally. And Tom Arnold puts me on the spot and turns to Mike and says, Mike, Aries does a good impression of you. Aries, do it. <laughs> you can smell the feces already, can't you? And usually when I do impressions in front of actual celebrities, they all say the same thing. Oh my God, that was very nice, I'm flattered, thank you. But with Mike, it was weird, because I did the impression and I was like, you know, I love boxing and everything that it's done for me. But sometimes they get very frustrated with the media, which is why I get very tyrannical with you. <laughs> and Mike was kind of laughing, but he wasn't. And he had like this snarl on his face. And after about six seconds, he finally said, you know, if you did that two or three years ago, how to chase you down the street and punch in the spleens. <laughs> but based on where I'm at in my life right now, I'm very flattered, thank you. And after he said it, I was cool, but I can't lie, I peed a little bit. <laughs> it wasn't like a big stain, just boop, just a drop, but I didn't want to get <laughs> on TV. <laughs> Listen, y'all have been fun, thank you.